here, welcome back. It's about, I don't know, like 7.30 in the morning. I just had to show you, there is about a five minute period of time when my living room just lights up with this warm sunrise color. I love it so much. I wish it was like this all the time. It was, it's just, it's so nice. I also wanted to show you that we did um, change things around a little bit. We used to have this couch kind of over here and we realized it was blocking. What are you doing? What are you doing, you crazy boy? He is obsessed. He steals these, steals them and he just plays with them. Okay, come here. Ready? Ready? love mornings out here. I love mornings and I love evenings. They, it is just, oh, it's just so beautiful. Um, so plans for today, nothing, nothing totally specific. Isaac is coming. Isaac is, um, the gentleman who is, has been helping me out around the property, which is wonderful. He, he might actually be bringing a friend today. He told me he was going to try and talk one of his friends into coming and helping him out, which would be just awesome. Um, so I do have a whole new pile of compost right there that I had delivered. Um, and I'm hoping that Isaac and, and maybe his friend will be able to finish up the orchard today, like get it completely covered with compost and like kind of, kind of wrapped up a little bit with that. And then, and then he can start you know, going other places. Um, so I, what else am I doing today? I did get a delivery. Sorry, I had to cough. I did get a delivery from colorblends.com, um, some bulbs that I'm very excited about. Uh, so I have to like process those. Um, basically I have to get the tulips. I did get some tulips and I have to get those in my bulb fridge and started pre-chilling because here where I live in zone 9b, you do have to pre-chill your tulip bulbs at least six to 12 weeks. I mean, probably the longer, the better. Uh, so I do wish I got them maybe like a month ago, but you know, it is what it is. It's totally fine. So I have to get those tulips in the bulb fridge and then I probably won't plant my, my tulip bulbs probably towards the end of December, which is, um, which will give them the max amount of pre-chill time possible. I do not have to pre-chill my daffodils and I got a ton of daffodils in this delivery and they're going to be going in my zigzag planter and I can plant those now. I can plant those anytime now until probably end of December, maybe mid January. Um, but I don't want to take, I don't want to take all my pretty stuff out of my zigzag planter yet. So I'm going to push that off as well. Uh, and then I think the only other thing that I wanted to do today is I wanted to get my Matilla hop poppies planted. So I had planned on planting my Matilla hop poppies up there, over there on the long border. Um, but you know, they are going to spread. And a lot of you pointed out that it probably shouldn't spread into the neighbor's yard because they do have dogs. And, um, and I appreciate you guys pointing that out because I just, I didn't really think too much about it simply because I've never had a dog that would eat like plants that were somewhat toxic to them. Um, but, but that is a good point. You never know. So I decided to move my Matilla hop poppies over this way and they're going to go along this garden, the willow tree garden bed right here. And I'm going to put them, um, like along the fence right there. Uh, so I think I'm going to put two, I have two right now. I think I'm going to put two right there and then eventually I want to get a third one and put it right there. But Matilla hop poppies are known for being super duper finicky for planting. And so I'm kind of worried about it. But the important thing is that you plant it in native soil and it's you want to make sure it has plenty of moisture. So I'm going to take a cue from yesterday when I planted my Beyond Pinked Caryopteris over there. I pre-soaked the holes. I am going to pre-soak the holes over here. I need to get all this stuff moved. Um, so I want to plant them in the native soil right here before Isaac brings the compost into the willow tree garden bed. Um, and then, I, I think I said this, but then if they spread, they're going to spread to this side of the fence. And this side of the fence is just kind of by the road. There's 
kind of nothing here. Um, actually, I want to tell you guys my plans for this. All right, so this is the front of my property. Literally nothing to look at other than a black fence and some weeds. Um, so I, actually, I have one random rose bush right here. It's the funniest thing. I did see it. I did see it bloom one time. It wasn't that. Oh, there are some buds. It wasn't that pretty. But anyway, so I have plans. Well, I have two options and I would love a little bit of input. Um, one thing I can do, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing I can do, I was thinking about planting a native garden bed right here, like a whole bunch of natives that I really don't have to water. And, you know, it's going to be kind of like whimsical and, and, messy a little bit and um uh you know just like really pretty like a whole bunch of natives i thought that that would be really cool or or the other option is i can do because there's so much space out here let me zoom out so there's so much space out here i can do say like five vertigo penicetums here and then fill it in with super tunia vista bubblegum wouldn't that be amazing so i can't decide which one i want to do you know, it's like, yeah, it'd be great to have the natives and it'd be wonderful, but how beautiful would it be to have just like this big swath of Supertunia Vista bubblegum? And here, Supertunia Vista bubblegum is, I mean, it's technically an annual for us, but a lot of people said that it wintered over. So I'm wondering if I could just like leave all of it out here and like kind of just kind of let it do its own thing um, and see how it does. Oh, I just think... That would be really pretty. I just I keep going back and forth. I can't really decide. So anyway, my point is is that the if it if the Matillaha poppy spreads out here, it's no big deal because it's right by the road and um, the goats can't get over here because they're they're locked in. You know they they have their own separate gate over there. I mean if they get out, yes, but you know if they get out, that's that's a, that's a whole nother issue. So I'd love to hear what you what your opinion is on the front, um, the front garden by the road. Maybe I'll put a poll up. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll put a poll up. So look, um, if you, I think you have to be subscribed. So go ahead, please subscribe to my channel, and then um, and then I'll put a poll up, and you guys can either vote for the Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum Drift or the Native Planting Bed for the front, and that you know just. Just, I would love your opinion just to see because I keep going back and forth. I'm about 50-50. I think both ways would be super cool, but um, I don't know. I can't decide. So I will pre-moisten two holes right there for the Matillaha poppies. I hope that they will take. You never know. They're so incredibly finicky. And then I am in the market for one more Matillaha poppy over here. Um, I'm hoping Van Windens will get their hands on some more. I already asked Eileen at um, Van Windens in Napa to notify me when she gets another one. Uh, and then... Over here, this is where I planted a whole bunch of bearded iris with Pamela from Flower Patch Farmhouse. And I kind of have showed you all that and that, which is totally a mess. And so these are ground squirrels. Oh, there's another one. Darn it. So these are ground squirrels. A lot of people said, oh, that's too big. I don't think that they are ground squirrels. I'm, I'm like 99% positive they're ground squirrels. So I read that if you can see the tunnel, then it is a ground squirrel. If you see just a mound, then it's like a gopher mound, basically. And so you can totally see the tunnels and there's ground squirrels running around everywhere. And another reason why I think those ground squirrels is when the arborist came, he saw these holes. I have holes like this in my backyard and he said that they were ground squirrels. Um, so it's just a really common thing we have here. So I have been looking on the IPM website for how to deal with the ground squirrels. And the IPM website is Integrated Pest Management. Um, I'll link the website down below. I've talked about this a lot before, but it's fantastic. It basically tells you the right way how to deal with any pest in your garden whether it's a bug or whether it's a fungus or whether it is a ground squirrel or like you know something like that um so basically what they said is there's a couple ways that you can deal with it um and some of it involves not so nice things things that i'm just not really comfortable with doing maybe maybe if i get really really annoyed with them i will um i will do those techniques it's like 
catch and kill and you know and stuff like that I, I just I don't I don't want to do that plus I don't think that there's any point to do that because there are so many brown squirrels like right across the street right there and so if I catch some here there more are just gonna come so I just don't see any point with that so my plan is is just to kind of coexist with the ground squirrels hopefully hopefully they will be kind to me and I will be kind to them and um you know just kind of deal with them and expect that they're going to be here a little bit and I hope that I will kind of disturb the area so much in my property that they'll just go to the next property over where the ground there is pretty much untouched I think that they'll be happier there um so the only thing I with that method that I do have to think about is I do have to think about things that squirrels like to eat like tulips tulips are i guess one of their favorite food and crocus and hyacinth um so uh when i plant any of those you don't have to worry about daffodils with them and you also don't have to worry about uh alliums right and daffodils are the main thing the main bulb that i'm going to be planting because daffodils naturalize here um so and i love daffodils are one of my favorite flowers so with the tulips i am going to plant after i pre-chill them and then I plant them, I have to I have to somewhat protect them. And I've been looking into how I'm gonna protect them, whether I'm going to like invest in tulip baskets, which means you plant tulips in a basket and then you sink the, you, you basically bury the whole basket in the garden. That seems like a lot of digging for me. So the other option is, is to plant them and then to put like um, chicken wire or hardwood hardware cloth sorry I had to cough again um hardware cloth over it to kind of deter the squirrels um from digging so I think I'll probably try both methods this first year and see how it does um but yeah tulips tulips are beautiful but you know they're not they're not an easy thing for those of us in at least in my area in California. All right, this is turning into a garden tour. I have to stop. <laughs> this is not a garden tour. Um, so my plans for today are to get Isaac and his friends started on all the compost and everything. Um, I do want to plant my Matilla poppies. Oh, so I have to go pre-moisten pre the holes over there. Um, and then I have to unpackage, un you know, unbox my... Um, my color blends order and get those things all figured out. And then if I have time, I am, Michael Glassman is coming on Friday. So I kind of want to like clean the property up. It, this is like a work site here. Like there's stuff everywhere. Like I got tools and a green waste bin and a whole bunch of blocks over here from when we, um, we, we took these blocks off over around the pomegranate tree, which looks so much better with those blocks off. Um, I still have my fountain. I did get a, uh, like a dolly, like a really big dolly. I don't know if you can see that package over there by the front door, um, to, to move the fountain over into the shade garden area, the secret shade garden. Um, so that can be moved. There's just a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up. And, um, so I kind of want to get some of that done today. So let's get started and see what we can get accomplished today. <music> Speaking of rodents in my garden, I started I started watering right here and there's this hole right there and as soon as I started watering, a mouse jumped out and ran over there. <laughs> that, that definitely got my heart going this morning. Um, so I feel bad. That's obviously it's home, but not anymore. Sorry mouse, time to go. Time to move. Move to the neighbor's yard. right here ready to be planted 
they are the holes are getting pretty wet right here this has been going i've kind of just been alternating alternating them back and forth you know just like every couple minutes or so this ground is a lot 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 drier than any of the ground over in the orchard because the orchard is getting irrigated the orchard trees have been getting irrigated so this is even worse so i'm even i'm i'm doing even more <laughs> pre-wetting of the soil um, and while i was waiting for that i decided to start staking up this willow tree this willow tree is so <laughs> bent over just one way i am gonna limit up i'm gonna take all these guys off um, and it's just so leaning over this way so i'm mainly gonna tie it to this one right here but this setup with the three stakes i am completely copying what i saw rafael do at park winters in winters california he had a beautiful willow tree there and he had three stakes around it just like this so that that is the only i'm you know i am not an expert in staking trees but i thought you know at least i'll make it look like that and then i know whenever you stake a tree you really don't want to overstake it like having this guy right here and it kind of strapped see how it's strapped to it at the bottom that's not good for it because this tree isn't getting the movement that it needs to develop a strong cambium layer which is going to make it nice and straight and strong um so i know i need to get rid of this one i know that i need to stake it up from the opposite side so definitely this tree right this stake right here um but i'm going to leave these other two here just in case like the wind or it starts growing a lot this way I, you know we're gonna see, we're gonna see how it goes it's gonna be a process um and i'll probably get the arborist here just to kind of check my work too so the problem is is that i reused these stakes from other trees that were around the property um so that was nice but i don't have any like straps so i basically have to go and find something that i can use for a strap you basically you want it to be pretty thick um and you want it to be pretty flexible. You don't want it to be too rigid because again, you want that tree to be able to move with the wind. So that movement actually causes the tree to develop a, a better cambium layer to make a stronger tree. Um, and you also don't want anything that's gonna dig into the tree. And I'm only gonna stake this probably for about a year and then I will take it off, um, you know, and kind of see how it does. But I gotta find something that's gonna last a year and not hurt the tree and um and it's something that i have here because i don't want to drive to the store and get any <laughs> straps or anything like that so i'm gonna go see what i can find so let me just show you real quick this is my apricot tree and this tree had stakes like all over it and i actually had isaac remove the stakes last time he was here but they used wire to stake the tree which is not good at all and they did use a couple um these look like washcloths or something to kind of uh, cushion the tree, but wire is, is pretty much the last thing you want to use for any type of straps. So that is what not to do. And into my messy garage I go. Jason and I were talking this morning saying it looks like it's fall, but it's not fall. It's just nothing is put away where it needs to be. Like nothing is organized at all. So I'm kind of excited for it to start raining so i can get out here and i can start organizing um okay so i have this stuff this is what i usually use to tie up any plants but i don't think that this is going to be strong enough for the willow tree um so i don't think i'm going to use that my other idea was like to these are like this is like old bedding um that uh, the girls were not using anymore um so we were either going to donate it to like um what do you call it like a like a dog shelter or i was thinking i can cut it up and use some of this i think that that would work let's see what i have in here sorry it's so dark okay let's see i have bird netting i don't think that will work i have tomato clips i have a huge bag of perlite oh, i can't find anything i can always use spaghetti tubing I think that's what I'm going to use. I think that would be perfect. I think I'm just going to cut this into strips. And yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to use. There we go. I knew I'd find something.
right, so this was not on the list today, but I decided to get it done and I think it looks beautiful. Uh, so three stakes all the way down into the ground. They're nice and secure. And then I got one piece of burlap there. I don't know, I'm gonna have to look at the, the straps and decide where I need them because I, I, the willow tree kind of looks curved a little bit. So I'll just have to watch it and kind of figure it out. Um, and then decided to paint them black. And of course, got my shirt all messy. So this is now a painting shirt. Where is it? Right there. But that's okay. So that looks really good. Now, let's see. I have watered the holes for a pretty long time. So I'm going to try and dig them uh, with the power planter. The guys have been working hard. They are getting all the compost in. You can see that. They're doing a great job. Super hard workers. They're amazing. Uh, so we're getting a lot done and I think it's only like 10 o'clock. So the advice for transplanting these so that they don't go into shock is to only use native soil for one thing, plant in the fall. I feel like that that's the biggest, the most important thing is planting in the fall, only using native soil, watering the hole that you're planting it in, which this one is plenty watered, and then watering the pot. So it comes out the bottom. Does it come out the bottom? There we go. And then just taking it out and putting it in and not messing with it at all, not messing with the roots or anything like that. So I'm just gonna carefully just like that. Nobody breathes. And that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. So they say when it's just getting settled, when it's still um, rooting in, you wanna water it once a week. And then once it's kind of settled in, then you can go down to once a month. So this is just gonna be on my watering schedule. I'm not even gonna put it on to drip. I'm just gonna set a timer on, or a reminder on my phone to come out and water these once a week. And everybody cross your fingers for me. So the only other thing I wanted to get done today for sure is I wanted to open up my, uh, my bulbs from colorblends.com. And last year when I lived at my old property, I had my big swoop in the front. And last year I did a, um, a daffodil blend called Spring Loaded. Oh, it was it was so beautiful. It was such a display because they did the blend and it had some, it had all different kinds of daffodils and it had some that bloomed early season, some mid and some late season. So I had this super, super long show of really, really beautiful daffodils. So I wanted to try something else a little bit different, um, uh, a little bit different this year. Actually, I ordered these, um, Color Blend sent me these, but I chose these uh, for my old property. I chose these before I had actually decided to move here. Um, and so it's pretty lucky that I have my zigzag planter because whatever I put in my swoop, I'm just gonna put in my zigzag planter now. So um, I chose a different blend and it's called Bloom Factory. It's a daffodil blend and it's supposed to be 
like just intense, intense blooms. And it says that if you plant them close enough, you basically, you can't even see the green foliage. All you're supposed to see is you're supposed to see the, the bloom heads of these daffodils. So I'm really, really excited to try them out. I know, I just looked at the Color Blends website and Color Blends, um, the spring loaded mix that I bought last year that I love so much, that's actually already sold out for this year. So that's, that's the rough thing about bulbs is that you have to kind of plan ahead and you have to order before you're even thinking about it, honestly, or else you don't get the best choice or you might not get what you want. So the spring loaded mix is already sold out, but the bloom factory mix is not sold out yet. So if you all are interested in that, go online and grab it right away. So let's see, I think I got, I think I got 500 of the bloom factory very exciting. So for these, I do not have to um, pre-chill these. I am just going to put them in room temperature, you know, kind of in a dark place. I'm going to put them in my office with my other daffodil bulbs. And then probably like around Thanksgiving, I will probably plant them in my zigzag planter. Now, when last year, when I had my uh, spring loaded mix in my front swoop, there was one daffodil in particular that was so beautiful. It was like this, this creamy white one, and it would like it just stood out from all the rest. And I thought we were, I you know, I was asking you all if you could identify it because that's the thing with these blends, they don't really tell you exactly what varieties are in it. So sometimes you kind of have to guess. So we were trying to guess what the white one was in the. Um, I keep forgetting the names of them. <laughs> the spring loaded mix we were trying to guess the name of the white one and um so we were you know trying to think it out think think of which one it was and color blends actually contacted me and said no that's a new one that's a newer daffodil that we're just introducing and we first introduced it in the bloom factory mix no the spring loaded mix and now they are selling it individually so that one is called watch up and it's right here, not much to see. I'll put a picture on the screen right now. It's called Watch Up and it is, in real life, it's beautiful. I'll see if I can find pictures that I took of it last year. So I have to find a really good place for these creamy white uh, daffodils. They're so, so, so pretty. So I got a hundred of those. And then finally, I wanted to try one of their tulip blends. I've actually never tried one of the color blends tulip blends. So this one is called Gentle Giant. And my favorite tulip by far is the Big Love Tulip. Um, you know, she's kind of like this classic clear pink tulip. It kind of reminds me of Supertunia Vista Bubblegum Pink. Like it's just a beautiful, beautiful tulip. Um, and so these kind of reminded me of that. It was, you know, it was kind of different uh, different shades of pinks and like light purples and stuff like that. It looked really, really pretty online. The picture looked pretty online. So these are what I am going to put in my bulb fridge in my garage right now. And they need to chill, like I said, six to 12 weeks. So let's see, it's mid October right now. So the earliest that I can plant these are like the first week of December, but I'm going to plant them the last week of December. So then that will give me about 10 weeks of chill time, which I think, I think will be perfect. And these I do, I have to protect from the squirrels, but all this other stuff, I don't have to protect. And all this other stuff should naturalize in my zone 9B garden, and it should be really, really happy. So good bang for my buck right here. A little bit of a splurge with the tulips, um, and way more work and way more, way more effort, but I think it'll be completely worth it. So let's go put these in my bulb fridge. All right, so out here in my garage, here is my bulb fridge. Yes, I know that's a very big fridge for a bulb fridge, but this was the fridge that was inside when we first moved in here. And so instead of just tossing it or selling it, we just stuck it in here and we use it. I use it. I use it for my bulb fridge. 
So here you can see there's some bags from Costco. These are the ones that I got from Costco. Um, so they've been in here probably like four weeks, I would say, four or five weeks. And again, I'm not gonna plant these until December. Um, so they are doing really, really well. This one right here, they don't need to be refrigerated. This is just in here because I actually bought this last year and um, I never ended up planting them. So we just left them in the fridge and same with this muscari right here and ugh, i'm gonna plant them to see if they will bloom but i, I don't have high hopes for them muscari you do have to refrigerate in my zone in zone 9b okay so i am just going to put these down here and that's it that's it i think jason i think jason just put this in here yeah so this this for the bunnies it's a little bunny treat. Um, one thing with bulb fridges is you don't want to put fruits or vegetables in, uh, in, in with the the bulbs because the ethylene gas that comes off of fruits and vegetables, like bananas or apples or um, tomatoes or stuff like that, that is going to actually damage uh, the bulbs. It's going to mess with their their uh, chemical. I don't know development I guess is what I'll say so I mean this would probably be fine because it's just spring mix but I'm I'm gonna take it out anyway it shouldn't be in there so there's my bulb fridge starting to fill up and yeah that's it so goal is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit is what you want and so I think I think this is probably around I had a thermometer in here earlier um I I my fridge inside you can actually set to the temperature this one i just have to kind of guess so yeah you just want it to be around there and do not freeze them that is not what you want to do all right so i think that's going to be it for today i got a lot of stuff done this morning it's, it's only about noon right now uh isaac and his friend milo are working hard in the front yard i will show you all tomorrow what they did because it's it's looking really really good um and so let's see i got the poppies planted i got the bulbs unpacked and chilling and then i got that willow tree staked up which is fantastic so right now i can see i gotta go water everything for sure it is mid-october i thought it was going to start getting cooler but it we're in the 90s today and i think tomorrow is going to be 94 which is i'm done <laughs> I'm ready for some cool weather. So I am off to go water. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.